The Museum Roadshow is brought to you by 125 Apparel. In 1974, the Detroit Lakes Public Library joined the Lake Agassiz Regional Library System. So here's just a map of Lake Agassiz Regional Library. Um, we're a, it's a consolidated public library system, and we serve the, re the residents of Becker County, Clay, Clearwater, Monoman, Nom Norman, Polk, and Wilkin counties. Um, Lake AC Regional Library is comprised of 13 branch libraries, so we include Moorhead, Crookston, um, and nine link sites. And the, La the Lake Agassiz Regional Library administrative offices are located in Moorhead, Minnesota. In 1976, the original building was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. So our, our original building is on the National Register. And then in 1988, um, in addition to the library was built. So they started talking in 1984 that um, they needed to assess the current building and make plans for expansion. Uh, the most critical needs were space, staff, hours of opening, and a larger collection. So in 1985, the city hired Jeffrey Scher of the Minneapolis architectural firm of Meyer, Scher, and Rock Castle to design an addition to the original Carnegie building. So a successful bond referendum election was held in September 1987 which allowed the financing of a $1.7 million addition. Groundbreaking for this addition took place in August of 1988, and the building was completed in August of 1989. Uh, TF Powers of Fargo, North Dakota was a general contractor. Bergens of Detroit Lakes had the landscaping contract, and driveway services of Detroit Lakes had the parking lot contract. So total expenditures for the 1988 addition was $2 million. So of that, there was a bonding bill for $1.7 million. Uh, we received a library services and construction grant for $200,000. And then contributions, so local contributions totaled $100,000 to build the addition to the library. So from the start and now um, all these years later, the community is still recognizing the need for a strong public library and are willing to fund it. Um, so the addition was designed by MSNR of Minneapolis. The addition echoes the features of the original building. Great care was taken to match the original building's red clay tiles, brick and, brick and stonework. So I really, when you walk through the library, it really, it looks like one building. Like, it, yeah, it looks like one building. It's very cohesive. Um, Extra panels of the exterior frieze, which had been stored in the library's basement for many years, were used to make molds for new frieze panels. So we got to hear the first hand account of how that came about. Um, and then the oak trim, plaster ceilings, and furniture are all in the style of the period. The staircase banisters, bay windows with window seats, and even the coat trees were designed to preserve the classic prairie school style design. So our library is now 13,819 square feet. Uh, we house, we house in-house, we currently have a collection of approximately 28,000 items, but because we are part of the Lake Agassiz Regional Library System, we have access to over 200,000 items um, that you can, and, and more than that really, we can, <laughs> that's a whole other presentation, is library services, but, um, so the Detroit Lakes Library just plays a part now in the Lake Agassiz Regional Library System. <laughs> so just a few fun facts to end with. Um, the Becker County Museum, which was founded in 1943, was initially housed in the basement of the Becker County Courthouse, but prior to that time, the collection was stored in a closet at the Detroit Lakes Public Library, which is pretty cool. <laughs> And the president of the board of trustees held the key to that closet. 
Um, in November of 1993, we switched over to a fully automated library catalog and circulation system. So if you remember, we went from the card catalog, doo -doo 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 -doo, that was my first catalog in Perm. I remember going to the Perm library and using the card catalog. But Detroit Lakes automated in 93. And then in September of 2015, work was completed on the Once Upon a Time statue uh, by local artist Hans Gilsdorf, which now graces the library's front plaza. So again, we're still continuing to um, enhance our beautiful library while still, I think, staying rooted in the history and really the library's um, contributions to the community and what how the community has supported the library. So any questions? You might have to help me answer stuff. <laughs> what um, original things are still in the library, in the interior, do you know? I think like upstairs, a lot of it's original. Well, I know there's benches. Like when you go back to that, the picture of that interior where you see those wood benches from 1913, when you walk into the, to our library now, our front entrance, those benches are there. Um, I think it's mostly original. Upstairs, like in the Carnegie. The yeah, the circulation desk isn't there. But the, um, and the, the books are always stored on those shelves that are around, and they're there. Um, I think that we got a couple chairs from one of the banks a long time ago, and I think they're there down in the, in the by the magazines or newspapers. Yeah. Yep. That would make sense. Yeah. And the and the tables and things that are there were original. Yeah. So really, I think quite a bit still from from the Carnegie side. Fair question. Yep. 106 years from now, what are they going to be saying about the Detroit Lakes Library? <laughs> <laughs> what did they change? How did they grow? <laughs> they are going to say, we are so lucky to have this incredible library in our community. <laughs> Who are these librarians that are so creative and, and um, keep up with these crazy digital times. <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting question because even like when I look at that interior picture from 1913, so that was just 100 years ago when, with the beer head and they're standing like, what is that library? Like the, I, I would imagine their day-to-day -day tasks and now how I do my day-to-day -day tasks to function the library are worlds apart. Um, I think we will, people say, when I was in library school, getting my master's in library science, and people would, be fi would find out that I was in graduate school for that, people would tell me to my face, that's a very bad decision. In 20 years, there are going to be no libraries, so good luck. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just not, because I think library is one of our, what keeps us vibrant and what makes us such a core community resource is that we are flexible and we are really um, a reflection of what's happening in society and we're paying attention to what the needs are. So, I don't know, maybe, I hopefully it levitates. Yeah, right? Like that would be really cool if it was like a <laughs> levitating library. Oh, and. Sweetie. Self-cleaning would be very good. All the books, obviously, you just have to like think of the book that you need, and then it comes to you, like, and then it comes to your hand. Shelving's going to be a breeze. Yeah, fascinating question. It's we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Being on the national register was a problem because we have to keep that original building as it was. And we wanted to add an addition that reflected that original building. And they said, you can't do that. You've got to put something modern back there. And we said, no, we aren't going to stand for that. We want it all one. And the uh, way that got solved, if you look at the original building and what was added in between is a white paneling on the outside. And they said, you have to put that in to separate what was added to what was the original building. So we were able to do what we wanted to do, but it would have been a shame to put something modern back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So on the outside of the building? Yeah, on the outside of the building, if you look at it, there's a white panel between the 
two basic structures. And that's because of the National Register. We had Interesting. to fight you fight your way up around yep. you. I'm glad you did. <laughs> library Club is one club that has been continuous from when it first started until now. And that's one of the things we in Library Club fought for because a while it was dwindling. And we said, we can't let this die. This has to stay. And it has. Mm -hmm. It's gotten bigger. Bravo. Yes. Yes. So cool. There, there's no indication on the inside, is there? There's no real indication on the inside in there. There's, it's seedless. No, on the no, you don't see any indication inside. Mm -hmm. It's, but mm -hmm. look, we still had to keep the inside of the original building mm -hmm. as it was. Mm -hmm. right. Nicely done. And if you look at the woodwork in the basement and the woodwork upstairs, the upstairs is that beautiful woodwork, and downstairs it's a, a lesser quality, and they mm. did that. They wanted the basement open, those early ones, but they had to do it more cheaply. And so the downstairs isn't the quality that the upstairs is. Sure, interesting. Any other questions? Especially we got really, <laughs> like really. Yep, yeah, yeah. And even Minnesota has what's called MinLink, so all the um, library system catalogs within Minnesota are connected in a very nice, just MinLink, you go and can search there and you can search all the books in Minnesota, including you know the university libraries, special libraries, um, and that is very seamless. You can do that yourself, and it will arrive at the Detroit Lakes Public Library. And as you say, yes. And then looking out of state, that's we can yeah just ask <laughs> if there's a book, we will we will um, track it down for you. Thank you all for being here today. Um, in celebration of National Library Week, in celebration of the DL Library, and just history. Um, it's, it's really fun to have a place in your community when you start digging into the history and you get to hear all these stories. So we're glad that the Becker County um, History Museum is here. I was, when I was researching for this presentation, I found some of our older images from Minnesota Reflections with the Becker County uh, Museums contributes to their resources. So um, we're all connected in bringing these stories, keeping them alive. So thank you very much. The Museum Roadshow is brought to you by 125 Apparel.